Welcome back to Jyoti Hydroponics Farm videos. Let's get started to get better at farming. Agriculture can be done by anybody, but here we are concerned about the commercial agriculture. The process by which plants grow is called photosynthesis. Plants take CO2 plus light plus water, which is converted to carbohydrates plus oxygen plus water. In our atmosphere, we have 78% nitrogen and this nitrogen cannot be consumed by plants as plants take nitrogen in the form of nitrates only. 21% is oxygen, 1% other gases and from these other gases has CO2 in it which only consumes 0.035% or 350 ppm that is air holds only 350 ppm of carbon dioxide in the air and plants can withstand maximum of 1000 to 1500 ppm of CO2 in the air. Greenhouse climate is not about nitrogen or oxygen. It is about the content of CO2 in it. Quality of water and quantity of water. So before setting up the commercial greenhouse, make sure there is quality of water and quantity of water and sufficient light. Let's move to our next slide. How photosynthesis works. A plant absorbs carbon dioxide from the air through tiny holes in its leaves, branches, stems, flowers and roots. Water from the soil through its roots and light energy from the sun to perform photosynthesis. Light energy triggers a chemical reaction breaking down carbon dioxide and water molecules and rearranging them to create sugar and oxygen gas. Sugar is then broken down by hard working organelles called chloroplast, which are most abundant in the cells of the plant's green leaves into energy to fuel the plant's growth and repair. The oxygen gas produced by the plant goes back into the atmosphere via same little holes that absorbed the carbon dioxide. Let's go to our next slide. Does light intensity matter for the growth of the plant? If a plant doesn't get enough light from the sun, the photosynthetic process slows down. Even if it has sufficient water and carbon dioxide, increasing the light intensity will boost the speed of photosynthesis. Likewise, if a plant doesn't get enough carbon dioxide, this limits the photosynthetic process even if it gets plenty of light. So everything is vice versa. So if you don't have enough light, even then the plant won't give you a good growth. Even if you don't have enough CO2 in the environment of polyhouse, even then the plant won't grow good. Let's go to our next slide now. Importance and advantages of polyhouse farming. The polyhouse farming protects the crops from any adverse environment such as high humidity or high temperature. There is a facility in polyhouses to control the temperature and the humidity in the polyhouse. So let's go to our next slide. Now this is a kind of example here for a polyhouse with the grow bags that we have installed. Here you can see to control the temperature, we have fans, we have foggers. Now to even control the humidity, we have a fan and path system, we have exhaust fans in the polyhouse. So any polyhouse, we can actually install the apparatus according to our requirement, how we can uh, control the environment of the polyhouse. So you can always have your own experiments to control the environment of your polyhouse. Let's go ahead to our next slide. Why we are opting for a polyhouse? The basic purpose of polyhouse is to trap carbon dioxide. Generally, CO2 is around 300 ppm in air. With a closed structure made by polycarbonate sheet, you can take it up to 1500 ppm which can increase photosynthesis and because of this yield is increased. It's advised to keep it closed till CO2 emitted by plants at night is utilized after sunrise. Humidity in a polyhouse is increased using mist, which helps open stomata. 
Stomata are actually the holes on the leaves for transpiration. Opening stomata helps CO2 to enter plants, leading to higher photosynthesis and so high yield. Mist from the misters mostly evaporates and reduces the temperature inside the greenhouse so as to protect the plastic itself from getting damaged by the sun's UV rays, it is UV protected. And as UV light also has an ill effect like snorching, vegetables are protected from UV light by the polyhouse. In India, the plastic used allows 50% to 60% of the light inside, which is sufficient for the plant growth. Direct sunlight is around 1 lakh lux which deteriorates plants growth. Polyhouse curtains when open have an insect net of around 50 mesh which does not allow moths to enter the inside and lay eggs out of which caterpillars emerge. Flowers and vegetables have 90% of the water in them. The polyhouse grown vegetables and flowers are of far better quality as they are protected from direct sunlight, UV light and the presence of higher humidity. We will end this session here and learn about the principle and the working of polyhouse in our next session. I hope this session had been very informative to all my viewers. We'll get touch in our next session. Till then, goodbye and have a nice day.